or things and games and whatever. So people don't concentrate so much so much on the free software applications that we preach about. Uh, the media players we like, the browsers we like, they just mention some app or application or something. So that's just the changing nature of Linux. And actually there was a good article by Jason Perlow um, a few days ago about the so-called decline in open source and why it's not really true that it's declining. It's just that the way we refer to open source now has changed because we already assume it to have penetrated many companies and actually been quite a standard thing for uh, companies to adhere to. So they would basically open accounts in places like SourceForge and GitHub and stuff and upload some of the source code but nobody would really write about it because it's very well accepted that we have all these you know millions of projects now that are basically open source with one license or another so uh, in open source is not dead but it, it's just it's not a new thing it's not really a distinguisher especially when so many companies do that I mean Android is in some sense, some sense I, I think it's becoming a bit more open core now because Google is not really opening everything but uh, but, but we, we already assume many of the services to be open source and quite rightly so and many things run on top of Linux and PHP and uh, which are themselves open source projects so uh, so that's yes yeah, so, so basically I'm, I'm saying only in the news uh, you, if you judge something like open source as a term and Ubuntu as a term in, re in reference to the computing uh, computing world and I think that's quite informally just the distro um, that's declining. So if you're looking for news there, it's just it's not news anymore. It's like you said, it's a bit like Windows. You, you can refer to it as a uh, as a free distribution that basically exists. Lots of people are using it happily, and they don't have to spend their time writing about how wonderful Ubuntu is because they know lots of people use that, and they just carry on doing whatever work they're supposed to do. If a company is using open source and the code is available in some repository, they'll just you know, say, yeah, of course it is, and just carry on and talk about the uh, the merits, the technical merits of the, the project. And I, I know some companies do that. We just assume it's open source, and you don't have to brag about it because it's not really a very unique thing anymore. Well, I believe the next topic we've got is um, you want to mention something briefly about Sabai on Sabion uh, version six. So, so uh, what is, is his name? Fabio or Fabrice or something? Uh, the person who's the, behind the uh, development. Of I'm going to get shot down for this because it's a distribution that I have a lot of praise for. I don't honestly know. I cannot remember. Three of them uh, last year. And I'll be shot down for that. Uh, Alex and Y is the is a nickname. Anyway, he's uh, he decided to release six flavors. I believe it's six flavors of Sabion, and he released. I think first he released three of them, and more recently he released three more. So there is a bit of news. Uh, if people are looking for a uh, variety of distros, uh, they have different preferences, you know, KDE, GNOME, and, uh, and a few more. I'm not sure which one is actually um, adhering to, but uh, in any case, if people are used to using one of the flavors of Ubuntu as a default thing, if they want something that's based off uh, Gen 2 uh, and something that's uh, what, what would you say is the distinct feature of uh, Sabine? Because you know, you I would, yeah, I mean, I would say, um, in my humble opinion, after using Sabine for possibly about a year, I think about a year and a half in total, Sabine does to get into. Um, it's a Ubuntu, Ubuntu ties is this, if that's such a word, if people know what I mean. It makes um, it makes getting to accessible. It makes it uh, immediately functional. It makes it out of the box. I found with um, the Sabine. It, there's no difference between installing that and installing Ubuntu in terms of functionality and immediacy of, of a functioning system. Um, my experience isn't unique. I wasn't one of the lucky few who had the magic hardware that just all happened to work. It's a common thing that I've read in many forums anyway. And you've got a very punchy distribution uh, that's very low on resources, that uh, has a decent sized footprint, and uh, I've had no issue with whatsoever. I recently uh, hosed my system in by accident and through a fault of my own, and that's the only reason why it came off. And I took the opportunity to try a few other things on my main rig, so I haven't actually got around to putting it back on, but it certainly will be going back on very, very shortly. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting back uh, back with, uh, with the iron. So uh, I think it's a fantastic distribution, you cannot go wrong with it, and it caters for everybody because it's, uh, it, it's, it's just so accessible. Uh, and I've, I've covered. I think I've covered it for 
remnant of the folks that we've talked about ahead now without looking back on ourselves. So check it out if you want to if you want to any successful. But the main thing about the uh, Sabayan that uh, really impressed me was the great Creative Commons music that it used to play on the live C D. Um which was one of the tracks we featured on uh on Tech Bytes a while ago. Um and I think it was called um Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if yeah. memory serves me right. Yeah. And that was sort of the, the mascot theme tune to to uh, spy on. So any distro with a theme tune like that has got to be great. Um, if I may, Roy, we'll keep on the subject of distros very quickly. Uh, just two quick mentions at the moment. We've uh, I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. We've got Artist X uh, Ubuntu based uh, comes in at a whopping 3.6 gigabytes of live CD goodness, and it's basically Ubuntu 11.04 with uh, the creative soul in mind. It has a plethora, in fact it's probably got every application you can possibly need and those that you don't uh, to do with music uh, sound uh, graphics, you name it, it's in there and it's uh, it's aimed at the creative souls amongst us um, it is just Ubuntu 11.04 from what I can see I don't I didn't notice any extra uh, artist tech specific tweaks to it per se uh, but the one good thing about seeing somebody's realisation of uh, of another distro is that you get introduced to packages that you might not have seen before or might not have considered before and sometimes this dream application that you always have in your mind that you're always looking for can sometimes pop up in somebody else's realisation of a, what a distribution should contain free bundled so I'd say have a look at artist tech, you can't go wrong I'm certainly still picking through the, uh, the Massive variety of choice to see what little gems are in the um, selection of music utilities because with doing the tech bite show, we're always keen to have a look and see if it's ways we can improve how we're deploying it, how we're uh, producing it. So there's certainly a few things of interest in there. Um, the second title I wanted to just briefly mention, there's not a lot to say about this, it's called Mycos 4.1.1 and its creator is Mike Saunders, I believe, who is known from the uni uh, Linux format. And uh, he's created a operating system written entirely in assembly language, and uh, it comes in at about, I believe, 1.6 megabytes is the size of the ISO, and um, it's a very tight, compact operating system as you can expect. The fact it's in written with assembly language it means it's blisteringly fast, and sticking it on your machine, you're not going to get a replacement to Linux Mint or Ubuntu or anything like that. It's a very bare bones system, but its aim from what it appears is that uh, it's, it's educational. It's to uh, show users the basics of assembly language, introduce people on how simple it is to create a, a very bare bones operating system. And I think it's a fantastic project. I've been looking at it now for a couple of days. I've just mentioned it on my site in a in a little review, which was kindly linked by Tux Machines. Um, so thank you very much, Tux Machines. And uh, it's it's really a fantastic project. Uh, you can learn a lot from this. It's, assembly language isn't difficult. There's a great big myth about it, and it's it's something that everybody can get involved with because the site which uh, Mycos is presented on also comes with a great selection of user manuals which can teach you the basics in no time. So uh, I thoroughly recommend uh, people have a look at that. It'll certainly increase your knowledge of computing and uh, it's nice once in a while for people to have a look and see what exactly works behind the scenes. I think many people get spoiled these days with these ultra high level languages and development kits that allow you to make Wolfenstein 3D within two clicks of a button and a, and a mouse press. And so it's very nice to see what makes a computer tick and some of the principles behind that so it's very good project very very educational and um yes worthwhile having a look at um and the other sorry sorry Roy. yeah i have to uh just interrupt very quickly we had, we've had some sound issues before um it's very obvious to any person who listens to it hopefully it's audible enough for people to understand everything that's coming from both sides but um just in case uh in case it's uh, a bit more of a I'll try and enhance that later. We never do post editing uh, beyond the uh, beyond just things like the noise removal, so things like passing filters around and trying to improve the quality in a very automated way is the only thing we do. So anyway, I apologize for the sound. So you go ahead now. Um, and then very very quickly, because I haven't covered this fully, and I'm still in the process of looking at it. I'm looking at. Um Aros again, and uh, in particular the Icarus project. And uh, for those that don't know, I'm a, a diehard Amiga fan, and uh, the Icarus project is an attempt to emulate some of the principles, some of the um, some of the environment of the old Windows, uh, the old Amiga system. Um, so it's a really exciting project for me uh, to get back into an Amiga-ish 
type of computing. And the one advantage it does have is very decent integration uh, of UAE. Uh, Amiga emulation into its desktop. So I believe it's using a UAE 